Okay, so now we're going to move on to parallelograms and triangles. And these are a little bit harder to do than rectangles and squares, but not that much. You just have to make sure that you're substituting the right values in. So for a parallelogram, to find the area, we're, we're going to do base times height. And this height, if you see right here, is called the altitude, and it's always perpendicular to the base. That's why when we do a square, we don't have to find a new altitude because this side is the altitude, or a rectangle because this side is the altitude of a rectangle. But because a parallelogram doesn't have right angles, we have to draw in this new height, and then our area is base times height. And for a triangle, it's pretty similar. If you look, if I were to draw in this diagonal of this parallelogram, I would get a triangle. That's why when we find the area of a triangle, it's one half base time height because it's half the area we would get if we had a parallelogram. And in a triangle, unless it's a right triangle, because a right triangle already has a height, because this is perpendicular to that, Unless it's a right triangle, you have to draw in a height in here. And then your area is one half base times height. Now sometimes you're going to have to draw your height outside the triangle or outside. You shouldn't have to do it outside a triangle often, but sometimes you have to do it for a parallelogram because this is the only place where it's going to form a right angle. But you want to make sure that you use this piece as the base instead of this whole piece and then your height is still going to give you the right area. So now we're going to do some examples. So find the area of the parallelogram. So they've already drawn the height in for us and they told us that the height is 7. Now the height is always going to be parallel perpendicular to the side that we use as the base. So for this particular tri er, parallelogram, this is our base, or this one. But since in a parallelogram opposite sides are congruent, it doesn't matter. So our base is 8. So the area of this parallelogram is 7 times 8 which is going to give us 56. And there aren't units on this one, but say they told us that these were in centimeters, our area would be 56 centimeters squared. Now we're going to do one more example to find the area. So they give us our height, and our height is equal to 8. Now if you look, when we use our base, we need this entire side, not just this piece of the base. So in order to find out what this, what this part of the base equals, we're going to have to use our Pythagorean theorem to solve for b. So if you look right here, inside this bigger triangle, a right triangle is formed right here. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this right triangle to find b. So a squared plus b squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. 8 squared is 64 plus b squared. And if you plug that into the calculator, you get 17 squared is equal to 289. So b squared is equal, we're going to subtract the 64 over, and we'll get 225. And if you take the square root of that and put it into a calculator, you get b is equal to plus or minus 115. Or, er, not 115, just 15. Now, if you remember, where you, this is a, a distance. We can't have negative distance, so we're just going to take the positive value of b. So this is 15. So to get the whole base, I'm going to add 6 plus 15. If you do that, you'll get 21. So to find the area of this triangle, we're going to take half the base, which is 21, 
times the height. Now it doesn't matter what order you multiply in because multiplication is commutative. So I'm just going to do the easier one first. 1 half times 8 is 4 times 21. It's going to give you 84. So our, the area of this triangle is 84 and pretend this said inches inches squared. So that's all with parallelograms and triangles. Make sure you come back and watch the next one where we're going to do areas of a trapezoid.